So today I'm just melting down frames, extracting honey, and spending a few days at home while we finish off the end of the year. As you saw, I've been out putting on boxes on top of hives and trying to um, get the bees to draw up some frames. And I'm gonna give you a quick update now on what those frames look like. Because I did some visits two days ago uh, when I put the last boxes on, but that's it and I'm not adding any more. But it looks like we've got a whole week to go of good weather and with a lot of farmers extra forage coming in uh, because the fields of fasili and green manures, so uh, the, the mixes they put in are all starting to start to flower. Uh, it looks like it could go on a bit longer, but I'm not intending it to. It doesn't matter uh, as long as the temperature stays kind of around 15, 18 degrees. Certainly the next week we're going to get up to 23 to 25, which is just kind of wow. You know, it's just going to do um, great stuff. Just to say that this is the end of the Mini Plus. Um, all these are melted down. All the frames are just put back in the boxes empty. I'm actually going to go through them all after and wash the boxes, scrape the frames, check there's nothing on them, and then they're all gonna be up for sale. That's the rest of the boxes over here. And these are just some more frames. I've melted down ongoing stuff, but that is nearly it for the year. I'm really pleased that I'm finally getting through all of this. So I'm kind of looking forward. Uh, I'm going away in just about three weeks to present at the National Honey Show. Uh, I'm doing a talk there on Asian Hornets uh, in the craft section at 3 p.m., 3.30 p.m. in the afternoon on Friday the 27th of October, that's this month. And I haven't even got my presentation ready yet, which is typically me. Um, and then I'm doing a presentation the next day uh, for Orpington Beekeepers Association on the in the evening um, at their clubhouse where they have their usual meetings. So if you want to look up, you can go to Orpington Beekeepers website and look for that, for the details about that. What I'm going to do is just share what I do for the people in the UK to hopefully give them some context of how they can maybe deal with Asian hornets. It's basically a beekeeper's perspective of how I keep my honeybees in France against Asian Hornet. This year, as you know, has been completely different to last year. Last year's was a disaster. This year was kind of a halcyon type utopia, is all I can say. I've had no issues this year with anything. All my bees have done really well. And I'm um, kind of delighted I'm going into the winter with approximately 180 production colonies, 130 nukes, and um, everything is looking really good. Next year is going to be another year. Who knows what will come? I imagine we'll probably be back to higher Asian Hornet numbers. But um, just pleased to have this weather. Um, when I come back in October, what I've got uh, my friend Chris Campbell coming over from Canada again. He's going to spend a few days with here. And we're going to catch up and we'll probably do a video or two, but we're going to be going then to harvest the honey that the bees have put um, above the brood boxes. That will probably be done then if I don't do it before I go away. But the way things are looking, I'm going to be extracting till probably at least next week. Not that there's a lot of honey, it's just I've got to extract very carefully, get it all out, put it all away, finish the frames, I want everything done before I go away in that respect. And then I'll come back and we'll have extra stuff to do, but that will be brood boxes that are stored in the main shed. And then obviously in January, we're all really looking forward to the um, the North American Bee Honey Bee Expo, which is gonna be absolutely amazing. Probably around 3000 people attending. And it's gonna be absolutely packed with amazing vendors and just gonna be so intense. I cannot wait. So I'm really looking forward to that as well. But that's the next three months all wrapped up. Somewhere in the middle of that, we've got Christmas, we've got end of season, we've got um, probably a round of vaping before the end of November, early December. That's when I usually try and get a vape on everything. Uh, and um, then it's, for me, it's hedge cutting, putting the garden to bed, and then getting on with the work in the main shed because there is a lot to do.
So anyway, that's a kind of bit of an update where we are. Video coming up now on... Come back to this little apiary where I just double brood box these three days ago. And then I did the video, the clip you saw before me doing this. Well, three days after, I just wanted to show you this. I've just come back into the apiary to see what the bees have been doing. And I was thinking they're going to probably like stall and they're not going to do much. But look at this. This is after three days. This is a big double brood box put above brand new frames. Put above the uh the strong colony underneath they're not flying much today because it is a bit cold today but look two three four i haven't got a queen excluder okay beneath this so i'll be interested to see the difference if there's any beneath the excluder or so above the excluder or not but i just wanted to try so that one is as well there's nearly six frames drawn up here what does that tell you about the pressure in the colony it's all nectar unbelievable absolutely look even every single one is drawn out look three days unbelievable this one as well look unbelievable I could take these out and put another one in. <laughs> now that would just be so greedy. So what I hope they'll do is I hope they'll build these out now and then they'll store some honey in and cure it and probably find that in 10 days time when the flow probably will stop, may do, may not, we'll have a good harvest of honey to take off. Now I'm not gonna be able to lift these boxes up. I'm gonna have to harvest it by hand, but that's fine by me. I can do that. But it just shows you how strong this flow has been and how strong this flow is. So it's absolutely incredible. And there's still some of these guys around. There. It's just an incredible season. Now we've got the nectar and the bees are just doing it mad. It's brilliant. So I'm doing the one at the end of this row all starting to pull the frames this was put on sunday nearly all pulled out just unreal this is just so good just loosen these frames off i haven't put any smoke or anything yet the bees are in a real build mode the flow is massive look at that virtually all pulled out hopefully they'll just carry on filling it now even to get this far, that frame is nearly built. I mean, that's free wax going into the colonies. Now they're filling that with nectar at the top, you can see. Absolutely unreal. Woohoo! Look at that. <laughs> free frames built, brand new frames built out for the end of the year. Cost me nothing. I had the frames in stock already. You see, you do a little bit of work and... There you go. So as you can see, I have really fallen on my feet this early autumn. By getting those frames out, I did another apiary on the way home and I got uh, another 12 boxes on so I think I've got about 50 double brood boxes on top of colonies now and that's approximately or well, 500 frames it's a massive amount but actually a little bit less because there's two partitions in a lot of the boxes but it was just a good exercise to get frames drawn we'll see what happens I don't think bees are going to take the stored nectar in the bottom and move it to the top so in that respect I don't think there'll be any detriment to the winter bees I'm going to go and check them again all next week. And if they start putting brood in the top, I'm going to have to shake all the bees through and put a queen excluder in. But from what I've seen, all they're doing is filling the top with brood. And it's an interesting point that I was worried about not putting a queen excluder on because I've never 
experienced this late flow in this type of scenario before. And I was chatting to a friend who does Heather and he said to me, don't bother because when you do Heather, most of the beekeepers never put a queen excluder on anyway because the bees don't go up this time of year. They're just using it to get it into storage. So I've tried that and I took the queen excluders off the majority of the colonies to basically give that really good contact between the brood nest, the top of the full brood nest and the empty frames above. Because sometimes they just don't go up because they don't like to. But if you take that excluder away, they're straight up in it. A couple that I had found that had already gone up into the top through the excluder I've left on just to see if there's a difference at the end to compare to others, because it's a good exercise. But overall, uh, as I said, I'm back to extracting now. I'm just going to leave the bees, get on with it. I'll have a visit next week, see what it's looking like. But there's nothing I can do now. We're at that time of year where your treatments are all done. I'm going to have to take mine out in about two weeks. Uh, maybe next week I could start. Uh, and then it's win the winter prep is basically done. All I've done is just given the bees a bit of extra space because of excessive flow. And I want you to realize that, that it's not that I'm trying to be ultra smart. I'm just using the bees a little bit more to draw up some frames so that next year, maybe I'll have a few extra um, frames of honey to use and foundation that's already drawn when I make my spring splits, if I do that. But it just gives me more options. And by having more options, you know, you've got more things at your fingertips for the next season. So having those frames may mean less honey is needed to draw them up. And therefore, I might not need to feed so much in the summer, blah, 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 blah. It's all the old cascade effect by putting a bit of prep in there. We shall see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you again soon. Bye for now.